Hey, good uh, uh, afternoon. I start a fairly large project today. <clears throat> it is a uh, a shop improvement. I am going to start working on a spray booth to put over in that corner over there. That corner is where my old lathe, old lathe used to sit. Uh, it's more or less just a collection point of shit. I just dump stuff over there. It's not a highly used portion of my shop. This is the area over here that freaking mostly gets utilized for doing projects. So that'll be a great spot to build my spray booth. It's also gonna be an area where I can uh, build a cabinet for my resin printing station. This all has to get vented to the outside of the shop. The reason is it's hard to go and spray paint outside when it's freaking 10 below zero out. And I live in Nebraska. That is not uncommon. Actually, this morning with wind chills, it felt like 15 below. Its actual air temperature was only five below. So yeah, it balmy five below. Now it's up to a whole 15 degrees. The wind isn't blowing, so yeah, it doesn't feel that bad. <clears throat> the time frame that you have in this cursed hell of a state to actually go outside and spray paint is relatively limited and when you when the temperature is right the wind never fucking stops blowing uh i've got an area right outside my shop there's a tree stump out here that i usually use during the summer and go spray paint on because during the summer the wind's coming out of the south south is that way tree stump is out here so the shot blocks most of it but the wind still comes through and even if you get blocked from the freaking wind and you're out there and you're spray painting you let it dry you come back to grab your stuff and there's freaking uh 27 fucking mosquitoes stuck in your damn uh freshly spray painted project you don't want that so i need something in my shop so i can spray paint all year round hopefully minimize the amount of bugs bugs are still gonna get into this shop they every time you open the door freaking half a dozen flies sneak their way in but you know i put some fly strips and shit in takes care of that situation uh we have to have a very sealed and vented spray booth now to vent it you got to have a fan that's what this is the first fan that I ordered, it was, I thought it was going to fucking work perfect. It was a piece of four inch conduit. It was meant to just tie into your standard household HVAC freaking conduit system. It's got a fan in there, moves a lot of air. It was like 120 CFM fan. CFM is uh, cubic feet per minute. I was like, that's going to fucking be perfect. I ordered it and it was cheap. It was, uh, what, 20, 24 bucks. Ordered it. And then got to thinking about it, went back and started reading. It was not a explosion proof fan. This was just meant for moving air. It was just to add uh, ventilation. It's like, okay, I'm building a spray booth. It's going to be an extremely volatile environment. Probably she probably should find a fan that is considered explosion proof. By explosion proof, what it is, is it's got a sealed motor. You can't see the brushes that are inside there. It's got sealed bearings, uh, you know, the stator. Everything is inside of a sealed container. So when this fan turns on, there is no risk of spark coming out and turning the airstream coming out of here into a fucking flamethrower. Now, this fan I got off Amazon. What is it 75 bucks so it's a little more expensive but it did not list what its cfm is now i've hooked it up ran it it's wicked quiet it does not make hardly any noise <coughs> and uh it moves a fairly decent amount of air i'm gonna probably conservatively estimate this at about a probably a hundred cfm fan not entirely certain if that is but 
it's probably pretty close to that. It, it, it might actually, it's probably actually about 150, but I'm gonna say it's about 100 CFM fan. The room that I'm gonna build over there with the angled ceiling, uh, you're probably looking at about 180 cubic feet of area that will have to be uh, vented. So every minute and three quarter, it will pull all the air out of that room. That should be more than enough to vent it. Now, this is cheap, Chineseium made piece of shit. Uh, the instructions that came with it were not right. It says right here on here, this is rated voltage of 110 volts. The instructions to wire it had you trying to wire this as a 220 freaking uh, fan. So that means <clears throat> you've got a ground wire right here and you've got two uh, power wires. You, one's gonna be neutral, one's gonna be your hot wire. If you wire this 220, that means both of these would be freaking hot. And uh, if this is only 110 rated freaking motor, <laughs> it'll spin like a motherfucker and then start on fire. I've already hooked this up to an extension cord, figured it out, you know, super safe. Take a plug and you just stick the fucking wires in there and then plug it into a wall. Now I messed with it. It is important on how you wire it. I have uh, this wire with uh, blue masking tape. That is gonna be your hot wire. And this will be the neutral wire and of course the ground. The ground's easy to figure out because if you wanna look inside here, it's just connected to a screw. <clears throat> if you swap these two wires around, all it does is makes the fan spin backwards. So instead of venting, it's just gonna blow air back into your, into your uh, spray booth. The first thing we got to do to hook this guy up, we got to put a plug on it because <clears throat> this will get tucked into the wall. It'll come like this. The wall will be sitting here. We'll put a plug on it and then, uh, then we can just take this uh, 10 foot extension cord, run it out of the spray booth down to a, a surge protector. All of my lights and everything for the spray booth are gonna be hooked into the surge protector. So when it's time to go in there and spray, flip the switch on your surge protector, everything comes on. You go in there, huff a lot of paint, come back out fucking happy. So let's, uh, let, we gotta strip some wires back. Cause this, these wires are like wicked small gauge. And this is, these have gotta be what about 18 gauge wires, which is, I'm surprised it's that small for an actual. So we're gonna strip back a fair amount of it. Yeah, it looks like right at 18 gauge. By stripping back a bunch, we can roll it over. Let's see, I need a screw em driver. The whole point of having all that extra wire sticking out, you fold it over and it gives you more wire to clamp onto when you stick this into your plug. All right, now it's some electrical tape. This is super, OSHA approved right here. Yeah, fuck OSHA, they're not allowed in my shop. All right, there we go. Plug wired. Plugged in. There we go. 
see how relatively quiet that is? And it's got a pretty decent amount of airflow. That should draw all the fumes in pretty good. <clears throat> now, this was advertised on Amazon. I'll, I'll put a link to this down below in the description. That, uh, that link will be an affiliate link, so if you buy it, I get a fucking super small portion of the profit. Uh, but it was advertised that this chintzy shit back here will stop any sort of wind flow and bugs from getting in through that vent. Now, apparently in China, their bugs must be fucking huge if they can't fit through these massive amount of gaps that are there. So this doesn't do goddamn thing. What I'm gonna do is my wall is four and a half inches thick, which is right here to exactly this crease line. So if I take my Dremel and I come through and I just grind this off and remove from here, that way, this stupid vent shit is gone. This will flush mount to the outside of the wall over there and then I take super, super fine uh, uh, window screen that's like uh, rated to keep gnats from getting in and uh, put that over top of the wall. No more bugs. Now it's going into the storage side of my shop, so it's not actually going outside, but the storage side of my shop isn't exactly vented or isn't sealed real well. There is a, a, a sliding door just on that side of the wall wind still comes in we don't want a lot of cold air coming in so i have this dryer vent now that's too small to work on here so what i'm going to do is build a box that's going to go on the outside of the wall over there and then this will get attached to it so anytime the fan comes on that'll open up let the freaking fumes out but it also help keep airflow from coming back through getting cold air into my shop. So, next step, I gotta cut this end off. Uh, just gonna use a Dremel, cut off wheel, and I'm gonna cut that end off. So I'm gonna shut the camera back off, turn my radio back up, get my Dremel out, and just follow this crease line and cut this back side off. Okay, where were we? Uh, I got the fan, you know, wired up and I cut, what I cut, like an inch and a half off of it. I did a great job keeping them freaking lines nice and straight. I mean, see how I, I damn near cut into my cord because I got fucking, my cutter got away from me. Uh, I tried using the Dremel with the cutoff wheel. That fucking barely even scratched the paint. I got the Sawzall blade out, tried to fucking cut it with the Sawzall blade. That did nothing. I ended up taking this into work and using my uh, my air-powered uh, cutoff wheel. And that went through it like butter. It just pew, went through really fast and it damn near got away from me and cut that fucking wire. So we are at the point that we're ready to install this thing. Now I've already done a bunch of work off the camera, the, the tedious, boring, shit well i guess all of my videos are tedious and boring <clears throat> but we need a hole in the wall that big now i already drilled the hole in the wall on the outside inside of my shop that wall over there right behind the camera is my south facing wall if you go out the door over there it actually goes out in the storage area of my shop it's like the last 10 feet of this building and it hasn't been improved it hadn't i haven't done anything to it other than uh Turn it into a complete and total disaster because there's so much shit out there. I got my lawnmower and my, my yard sprayer, uh, my weed sprayer, my cement mixer. I've got an old motorcycle that doesn't work, a new motorcycle that does work. Well, mini bikes, not really. It has two wheels and an engine, so it's a fucking motorcycle. Uh, 
I got ladders, tons of fucking ladders. I've got like six six foot step ladders. There's only one of me. Why do I need all these goddamn six foot step ladders? But somebody's like, hey, you want a step ladder? Sure, what the fuck? Like, maybe I can stack them on top of each other. Anyways, it's a disaster out there. Now, off camera, I went out on that side and I have shelves built into the wall there. And I didn't want to drill a hole from this side into there and drill <coughs> into the shelf. So I did some measuring, figured out where I could drill and missed the shelf brackets, missed the shit sitting on the shelves, came in here, transferred the, uh, the uh, measurements over. And believe it or not, when I drilled through this side of the wall, it went right into the marks on the other side of the wall. Somehow I managed to get it fucking right on the first try. I didn't, I don't have like 700 holes in my wall over there. Oh, I did. I just took that great big ass drill bit right there. My wall is four and a half inches thick. That's approximately six inches of guy measurement. It's probably only five inches. So now there's a hole all the way through. I went on the outside and uh, just put this up against the wall, traced it, cut that out with the with my trusty Black and Decker freaking uh, uh, jigsaw that I've had this thing for fuck. 20 years probably back when Black & Decker still made pretty decent quality tools. I haven't bought anything new from Black & Decker, but uh, from what I've heard, their quality has declined because they've kind of moved uh, their manufacturing to another country. <clears throat> All right, with that hole on the outside of the wall, before I go and drill and cut a great big freaking hole on this side of the wall and start letting all the cold air pour in, we need to kind of half-ass seal that up. That's what this is. I already cut all the, the wood and everything. This is going to get screwed to the inside outside of my shop over there. And then we've got my dryer vent thingy here. Uh, it used to have this extension on here. I cut it off because I don't need it. We will screw that down. Like that. Did I cut that hole big enough? That should fit down in there. Oh, it's curved. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is just more or less to keep most of the cold air and shit from freaking blowing through because all it's sealing up that side of the, the wall is just a really shitty freaking side rolling door that doesn't seal real well. This helps seal it. Uh, it also gives me an air barrier so I don't have any airflow coming into the shop. Before I screw this assembly onto the outside, I've got window screen that I'm going to screw up onto the wall or staple onto the wall. This will keep most of the bugs from just crawling right through the damn fan when it's not running. It won't keep all of them. You'll still get, you know, the little tiny gnats and shit, but you can't keep them things out. I think they actually just permeate right through the wall. It's like osmosis. Now, we well, gotta screw this thing together before I take it out there. Before I take it out there and uh, assemble it. So I wanna mark, we're gonna use some pocket holes and we don't have to hide the pocket holes in the inside because, you know, who gives a shit? So I want pocket hole roughly there, there, there. All right, that's gonna connect that together and then we'll probably want a pocket hole somewhere in that location. There, there, let's see, go there, there. Like that. All right, now I need my pocket hole jig. That there.
How the fuck did I do that? Those screws are going the right way. Those screws are going the right way. Those screws are going the right way. I put that one on, fuck, God damn it. How do I consistently screw everything up? Fuck. And don't say it's the beer. It's never, it's not, it's not the bush light. Now they're all on there, correct. Now I can drill. A handful of pile holes here. Ta da! A vent box. Okay. All right, with the vent box. We're gonna have to have, you know, anti-insect intrusion window screen put on here. This is kind of overkill, kind of expensive. Uh, this is actually pet guard window screen for my front door, uh, which I gotta redo because it didn't guard well against the pets. You got 120 pound fucking, uh, actually it wasn't my lab that did it. It was a great day that we used to have and then that son of a bitch fucking blew right through the screen it, it, it did nothing but she was almost you know 180 pound great dane you just cut a section bigger than the box now the holes in this You can, I don't know how well you can see that, but they're kind of large. It won't stop like gnats, little tiny fuck things. It just are the most annoying, one of the most annoying bugs on the planet. <coughs> but my shop isn't 100% sealed. There's a bit of a gap around my door uh, that I've never been able to fully seal. And it's all right. This will keep vast majority of the flies out it'll keep the wasps out you can't keep the gnats out it's impossible all right so now i am going to go out we got to go out staple this to the wall screw this to the wall and i think i was gonna freaking put silicone on here but i don't think it's wholly necessary I don't have enough screws. Well, I need eight screws. So I got two of them. Let's see. One and a quarter softwood freaking. So we need a total of eight of these guys. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need my stapler. regular staple gun isn't where it's supposed to be. I have to beat someone's ass. All right, we gotta go outside. Well, not outside, it's inside outside, but it's cold out there, it's not heated. So, I don't have any hair. Let's go, let's go hang this. I'll grab this. We'll screw that into the fucking wall.
can see. Well, that screw ain't going in. I'm probably not gonna get the top screws in either. Can I get at least one up here? Nope. Okay, so the Top screws aren't going to go in without taking all this fucking vinyl siding down. So, that's all right. That's our vent box. Let's go back inside where it's fucking warm. All right. Now we got to cut that out. We don't have to get super fucking accurate. Uh, we'd actually like to be a little bit on the outside of the freaking line because, uh, you know, we gotta have room <coughs> for the uh, the cord to come through the wall. And there's some screws on the outside of the, the casing. Then we gotta account for room. Then we gotta get in there and tear the insulation. I got too much shit piled up around here. I gotta hurry up and finish building this kind of crap. Okay, that's my pile of lumber that's gonna be um, the eventual paint station that I'm putting the vent in for, paint booth. Fiberglass insulation. See that hole here? Let's fucking bring this in. Right here is our fiberglass insulation. You probably can't see it, but I can see the, the vent right there. Let's see if my fan will slide in. All right. Oh, fuck. There's a goddamn board again. There's a little notch here for your, your cord to come out. So it'll fit flush against the wall. 
Let's see, is it gonna fit? I gotta open up. That open up the top part right here just a little bit. There we go. All right, I gotta get some fucking screws. See, I don't have any insulation inside of there. That's tucked in like it's supposed to be. All right, now this fan is set to suck, not blow. So it is pulling air. I'm gonna go out and, and see if it opens up that fucking vent okay. But I can actually feel the airflow. I got, the, the cobwebs are starting to move. I'm gonna go out and look and see if that vent's opening. It is opening, hold, let me, I'll fucking take you out there and look, hold on a second. I'm gonna collapse this goddamn cheap ass tripod down so it's easier to move around. Do I got to trim my nose hair? Probably. <clears throat> yes, I know it's a disaster out here. See the old Bridgestone motorcycle that don't run. But look at that. There's a nice amount of freaking airflow freaking coming through there. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Here's the, the working motorcycle I talked about. Back through. I gotta really clean this area out. All right, we got one last aspect of venting my future paint booth that we gotta get out of the way. Filtering. You don't want to just have your, your, uh, your fan running with all that spray fucking paint in the air it's just gonna get in there eventually it's gonna just gum up your uh, your fan it's just gonna ruin everything it's gonna fuck everything up the the vent on the outside will get clogged up it won't close anymore so we want to filter it I just got a fill treat uh, micro particle reduction air filter it's the smallest one that I could find but it's big enough that it will fit perfectly I think what we're gonna do I'm gonna take and cut a small notch where's my sharpie we'll, take and cut a, uh, we'll cut a small notch right there 
to go around the uh, <coughs> extension cord. But hold on, let me let me go cut a notch real quick. Notch cut. That will go in like that. All right, now we need to figure out. All right, we're gonna go. Let's see. Probably right there. Right there. There. And right there. Little dots. We're gonna put some eyelets in. All right, eyelets are in. Ow, there's a roof there. God damn it, I hit the board again. Little bungee cords. I think these will probably be just the thing that I need to make this work. Hook, hook, where's the notch? There's the notch. Just like that. Hold that up. Now we'll hold that in place. It's so quiet, you can't even tell it's running. Now with that filter in place, oh, I can actually, I'm gonna go out and make sure that that fucking thing is floppy open, but I can, Feel it drawing air. Ugh. Hey, all right. So I built the spray booth. It's it's not it's not done. This piece of plastic is not the final fucking door. Uh, I'm eventually gonna I'm gonna put a uh, canvas curtain up for now, and I have plans for some other things in the future. But right now, this is just a curtain to go up because I was doing some spray foam insulation inside the spray booth that has nasty freaking odors to it and I was testing my spray booth now I'm not this video is not about the spray booth it's about the fucking ventilation system that I put in the uh, the explosion proof fan uh, what I want you to pay attention to I was not sure how well this fan was gonna work because uh, when I got it it didn't show what the uh, the CFM how much freaking air it will move uh, it's quiet. You can, you, you can't even hear it running. I wasn't sure if it was actually going to be effective or not. Now this booth is pretty well sealed. It's a good sized booth though. There's a lot of room in there, but you'll see that next week. What you want to do? I'm going to turn that fan on and, uh, watch this plastic. Oh, my knees suck. Okay, the fan is on. I know that is probably the most exciting thing you're ever going to watch on YouTube is a sheet of plastic being pulled in by a draft of air being sucked out through an exhaust fan. But I'm pretty happy. That's that has actually got a fair amount of freaking uh, suction force to it. I think once you use the spray booth, you probably want to stand in there for a couple of minutes and let it pull all the fumes out before you open the curtain or the door or whatever whatever I happen to have on the finished product. I think this is gonna work really well. I'm pretty happy with how this curtain just freaking pulls in. And granted, it's lightweight plastic, but it really shows the airflow. So next week, I'll show you how I nailed plywood up on the wall. I get it painted. We're gonna put lighting in, put some details on the inside of it, and we'll show you the finished freaking uh, 
the spray booth so I can actually get in here and, and huff a serious amount of paint. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, notification, all that other fucking YouTube shit. I'll see you next time.